So what do we got here, Craig? We've got a RAM and bolt system from an Elite Rifle I found up in a box up in the archives for my dad's stuff. Cool. Uh, so these date to, I would say 1989. What do you think about that? We'll have to see. Yeah, around right about says. there, maybe no six months earlier than that, yeah. somewhere around there. So maybe yeah. like, like I, I've seen ads probably middle to end of '89. So probably, I would say. Be, just throughout maybe 1989 is kind of the experimentation period of that, but it could have been, they could have been making them before that as well. But that's, we're not really sure about that. So we can see that we have your, we have your ram and we have your bolt from the elite rifle. And uh, can you tell us about this style of ram that was used? Um, well, this this one uh, uses a true three way. There's only one port on the back, so you're only pressurizing one side of the ram. And it uses spring return, so if you uh, let go of the pressure, it snaps forward and chambers the ball. Then when you pull the trigger, cocks it, let go, chambers the ball, and you're ready to fire. Um, the problem with this system is, is it pressurizes the shaft side, so you would lose an amount of force because the shaft is taking up some of your surface area here. For example, like on a cocker or some of the newer guns, they would pressurize from the back side you get this entire surface area pushing down on the piston itself and increase the force. Um, but unfortunately, doing it this way and using a spring return, it kind of slowed things down a little bit and you'd have to increase your pressure in order to get the amount of force required to cock the gun and get a halfway decent rate of fire. So, you know, for example, you can see it holds the air there. And use this uh, Looks like a chopped down bolt, pretty similar to a PGP, and they would put a slot in the side of the gun so you could cock it by hand and stuff like that. So I would assume cock it like that if you wanted to. So a slot in the rear of the barrel breech top tube, or right. barrel breech tube of the rifle, and you would have that, that knob sticking out, and you would have those two Allen screws going into the back of that tube and that would hold it in place and then if you had a jam or if you just needed to cock the gun you would grab that little notch and we're looking at it upside down right now because your lug would go down into your hammer and you would grab that notch on the side of it and you would pull it back and that would cock or get rid of a jam right. and supposedly Glenn may have also incorporated that on some of his earliest rifles as well. I believe so. Yeah. I wasn't around too much when they were starting first doing the Mm -hmm. the, the hurricanes and the elite rifles and stuff like that. Yeah. And then they figured out how to uh, uh, flip the ram over and pressurize from the backside, and it gave them a lot more force and better rate of fire and more control over everything. We used a true four way with two ports. Cool. Hmm. So, with more, so having more force opening it up would allow for a faster speed. Well, it would it would save you pressure. Well, you can you can use more force to cock the gun back, and then less force to push the ball forward, and less likely to chop a ball. You would more likely pinch it instead of chopping it. Gotcha. Because you got the less force pushing forward okay. on the bolt. Gotcha. Cool. So uh, would that also, was there any aspect of that that would uh, improve the actual speed of the ram cycling as well? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because you uh, the bigger the shaft is, if you make the shaft big, ours were a little little bigger than the cockers and some others, but the bigger you make the shaft, that's less air that you have to fill mm -hmm. um, the ram in order to close it. Um, it doesn't give you as much force, but it, it can close a little bit faster gotcha. depending on what the application is. Gotcha. If there's not much force, you know, yeah, pushing it. But in. removing the spring return would also allow for a faster possible yeah. return. Yeah, because pneumatics just is way faster than some mechanical yeah. stuff all yeah. the time. Because you can just, you know, again control the pressure with the OPR pressure and right. and how fast the thing's moving. Uh, depending on how big the shaft is, will change how hard. Um, the return stroke is also because it just it uses up surface area on the piston. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Greg. Yep, yeah, no problem.